Uh, Bill, why did you come to this conference today? I came because I'm interested in working on what I think is one of the major disruptions that's going to occur as a result of technology. Which is? I think we're going to wind up with a society very shortly that has jobs, traditional jobs, for only 25% of the people. And that will be all the people that needs to work to continue to grow the productive output. What will the other people do? There has to be a major change in our cultural values so that we no longer will the first question be, what do you do? And get an answer that says, I'm a lawyer or I'm a doctor. Uh, it will be more along the lines of describing activity that is not motivated by revenue or profit. Uh, you mean like your hobbies? Well, no, I'm thinking more, in the context of this meeting, I'm thinking more about uh, how the various people can assist uh, in this and perpetuate this transition that no longer uh, uses a criteria of value that is monetary based. Well, if you ask a person, what do you do, they're free to answer it any way they want. Most people, what they do for a living is probably their most important activity that they spend most of their time on. You got it. That's the, but we're not going to be able to do that because 75% of them would have to say, oh, I'm unemployed. If you keep the traditional uh, attitudes that we've got now, and if you set up the uh, economy to demand that they be productive so they can be consumers so the economy can thrive because there's just not going to be that many jobs. The other thing is, I, I believe already we have a very large percentage of our people that are unemployable, not because they are indolent, uh, but because the delta between cognition and complexity has gotten so large that they have given up on trying to understand what's happening. You mean most jobs are too complicated for the average person to do? Not only those jobs, but to just be able to function in an environment where that kind of activity is going on. Not only will we have a limit on the capacity of jobs we've got, but we also have to make some transitions that will permit a division of the labor among the 25, uh, the 25% the without enhancing the discontinuity to such an extent that it paralyzes production. So does this mean that things have to be managed from a higher level, like the government, for example, as opposed to the free marketplace where everyone does what they can? I don't think that those are the only two alternatives. Uh, I think that you can uh, create a situation in which the individuals determines the nature of the contribution that they're going to make. Uh, not having the government uh, or the economy dictate those things. Because if the economy dictates them, what you're going to do is that you're going to wind up with a huge percentage of people that are getting uh, inordinately wealthy 
and unable to find things to consume that are in fact going to use the wealth that they earned to generate an economy that is based on consumerism. But wouldn't there always be people willing to produce luxury items for people who could afford to pay for it? They may well do that, but uh, we're, we're running out of luxury items that can be produced. You know, when you, when you get private individuals buying islands and having $1 million yachts, uh, that's not the kind of distribution in consumer spending. Well, if we're talking about changing culture, how do you go about changing culture? One of the biggest culture changers nowadays is through popular music, because young people listen to popular music and whatever values that music conveys, they tend to absorb that. Do we have to have songs about it? Well, music will be a big part of it, because music is, is in fact, uh, one of the best forms of universal communication that exists. Uh, if you think about the exporting of the musical genres to countries who have no understanding of the language that's being spoken in the lyrics of those songs, but they still feel the thing in their body. The beat uh, has its own message. That's right. Uh, and we don't yet know, I think, what the extent of the power of that beat is. We certainly should know by now that it is universal. Now, when you say that there will be massive unemployment, is that because each individual will be so productive because of machine technology that they'll be able to produce all the food and all the uh, manufactured items with just very few people. There's a confluence of, of things that will occur there. One is that the complexity that is created in this environment is going to be such that the disparity between complexity and cognition is going to exceed the capacity of a very large segment. I mean society people. will be too complicated for people to participate in it? Already is. Already is. That's why we have a huge percentage now of people that are not only unemployed, but they are unemployable. And everybody jumps on the bandwagon when you talk about education and retraining. But the bottom line is that that hasn't worked very well. Uh, one of the reasons I think it doesn't work very well is that the whole idea of teaching is to use history as the principal source of what you're trying to teach. Things are changing so fast now that history is uh, that kind of history is irrelevant. So that if you train the people based on that history, you may move them up a step on the cognition level, but you're not going to move them within the range that they can understand the complexity. And if, if we look at the previous cultures, like the Mayans or the Romans or uh, possibly even the Greeks, uh, you find out that what occurs at that point in time is that there develops a surrogate for understanding. Religion is a surrogate for understanding. If you can say, well, I can't understand that, but I'm not going to worry about that because uh, my gods or my god knows all about that. Well, religion was around long before life got as complicated as it is today. And it, it was much more controlling than it is today. Uh, 
I, I don't think that it's, it's uh, it will have to make some adjustments to survive. I mean, if you look at the uh, trend in Catholicism, uh, it tells you that it has become enormously less relevant in the last 200 years. We're just about out of time, which is unfortunate because I have a lot more questions I could ask. But do you have any last minute comments before we close? Anything you would like to address to our uh, massive audience? Well, the, the th I think the thing that I uh, feel obligated to address is how does this conference play into that? And I think what this conference is doing is it's helping us develop the menu for things that can assist in moving us to the new culture. Um, and since we are a human-based, supposedly, society, obviously humanities is got to be a much more important part of that process. And I think it is humanities, and like the things we've heard about today, that's going to produce us uh, produce for us an environment that will assist in that transition. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you.